Hello everyone, here we are. We're gonna get going with 1 Chronicles 22. So listen here. Then David said, the house of the Lord God is to be here and also the altar of burnt offering for Israel. Now remember, he's not the one who's gonna build it. So we need to just listen to what's going on here, okay? So David gave orders to assemble the foreigners residing in Israel, and from among them he appointed stone cutters to prepare dressed stone for the building of the house of God. He provided a large amount of iron to make nails for the doors of the gateways and for the fittings, and more bronze than could be weighed. He also provided more cedar logs than could be counted, for the Sidonians and Tyrians had brought large numbers of them to David. David said, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. Therefore, I'll make preparations for it. So David made extensive preparations before his death. Then he called for his son Solomon, excuse me, and charged him to build a house for the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But this word of the Lord came to me. You've shed much blood and have fought many wars. You're not to build a house for my name because you've shed much blood on the earth in my sight. But you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I'll give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon, and I'll grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. He'll be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the, excuse me. Now, my son, the Lord be with you, and may you have success and build the house of the Lord your God as he said you would. May the Lord give you discretion and understanding when he puts you in command over Israel so that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will have success if you're careful to observe the decrees and laws that the Lord gave Moses for Israel. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. I've taken great pains to provide for the temple of the Lord, a hundred thousand talents of gold, a million talents of silver, quantities of bronze and iron too great to be weighed, and uh, wood and stone. And you may add to them, you have many workers, stone cutters, masons, carpenters, as well as those skilled in every kind of work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, craftsmen uh, beyond number. Now begin the work and the Lord be with you. Excuse me. Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to help his son Solomon. He said to them, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not granted you rest on every side? For he's given the inhabitants of the land into my hands, and the land is subject to the Lord and to his people. Now devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. Begin to build the sanctuary of the Lord God so that you may bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the sacred articles belonging to God into the temple that will be built for the name of the Lord. All right. 23. When David was old and full of years, he made his son Solomon king over Israel. He also gathered together, excuse me, he also gathered together all the leaders of Israel as well as the priests and Levites. The Levites, 30 years old or more, were counted, and the total number was 38,000. David said, of these, 24,000 are to be in charge of the work of the temple of the Lord, and 6,000 to be officials and judges. 4,000 are to be gatekeepers, and 4,000 are to praise the Lord with the musical instruments I've provided for the purpose. For that purpose, David separated the Levites into divisions corresponding to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Gershonites, belonging to the Gershonites, Laden and Shammai, the sons of Laden, Jehiel the first, Zetham and Joel, three in all. The sons of Shammai, Shelemoth, Haziel, and Haran, three in all. These were the heads of the family of Laden. 
And the sons of Shammai, Jahath, Ziza, Jewish, and Bariah. These were the sons of Shammai, four in all. Jahath was the first and Ziza was the second, but Jeush and Bariah did not have many sons. So they, they, count, they were counted as one family with one assignment. This, excuse me, the sons of Kohath, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uzziel, four in all. The sons of Amram, Aaron and Moses. Aaron was set apart, he and his descendants forever, to consecrate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices before the Lord, to minister before him, and to pronounce blessings in his name forever. The sons of Moses, the man of God, were counted as part of the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses, Gershom and Eleazar, the descendants of Gershom, Shubael was the first, the descendants of Eleazar, Rehabiah was the first. Eleazar had no other sons, but the sons of Rehabiah were very numerous. The sons of Izhar, Shelemith was the first. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechameam the fourth. The sons of Uzziel, Micah the first, and Ishiah the second. Merarites, the sons of Merari, Mali and Mushi, the sons of M M Mali, Eleazar and Kish. Eleazar died without having sons. He only had daughters. Their cousins, the sons of Kish, married them. The sons of Mushi, Mali, Eder, and Jeremoth, three in all. Now, these are people we've heard about before, okay? So this is nothing new, all right? Uh, these were the descendants of Levi by their families, the heads of families. So basically he was talking about dividing 38,000 men up to do different functions in the temple. And then it went into, um, says David separated the Levites into divisions corresponding to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Then it goes into Gershon's sons. Uh, you know, the Gershonites, the Kohatites. So it's repeating here, okay? It's not talking about the people that are actually being assigned. Um, these are the descendants of Levi by their families, the heads of families as they were registered under their names and counted individually. That is, the workers 20 years old or more who served in the temple of the Lord. For David had said, since the Lord, the God of Israel, has granted rest to his people and has come to dwell in Jerusalem forever, the Levites no longer need to carry the tabernacle or any of the articles used in its service. According to the last instructions of David before he died, the Levites were counted from those 20 years old or more. Okay, so what's happening here is the Levites no longer need to carry the tabernacle, which was, you know, the narwhal skins and all these skins that were, remember the tent and it had layers and layers and they had everything on poles and, you know, they carried it on poles. None of that has to happen anymore because now they're going to build a temple. The duty of the Levites was to help Aaron's descendants in the service of the temple of the Lord, to be in charge of the courtyards, the side rooms, the purification of all sacred things, and the performance of other duties at the house of God. They were in charge of the bread set out on the table, the special flour for the grain offerings, the thin loaves made without yeast, the baking and the mixing and all the measurements of quantity and size. They were also to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord. They were to do the same thing in the evening. And whenever burnt offerings were presented to the Lord on the Sabbaths, at the new moon feasts, and at the appointed festivals. So they were morning and night on Sabbaths and, and festivals. They were to come and thank the Lord in the morning and the evening. Uh, as well as every morning and every evening, as well as these festivals and Sabbaths. They were to serve before the Lord regularly in the proper number and in the way prescribed for them. And so the Levites carried out their responsibilities for the tent of meeting and for the, for the holy place, and under their relatives, the descendants of Aaron, for the service of the temple of the Lord. Okay, so I know that sort of it was a little difficult for me because they started listing the people like Moses and Aaron. It's like, wait a minute, they're not here. Um, sometimes when I'm reading it, it's harder for me to understand. Uh, and then when I go back and I listen to myself 
read it, I'm like, oh, I get it. So you guys may get it more than I get it, but they were showing us the original tribes and now they're talking about how the descendants of those um, Levites, uh, those tribes are going, or the Levites, um, are going to be taking care of the temple. So their duties are the same, they just don't have to carry a tabernacle around anymore. Okay, um, maybe they're the same. Uh, it might be a little more formal now that there's a big, beautiful temple. These were the divisions, this is 24. These were the divisions of the descendants of Aaron. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithmar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father did and they had no sons. So Eleazar and Ithmar served as the priests. And we remember that because they brought strange, the first two sons brought strange fire and put it on the altar. And the Lord said, uh-uh, bye-bye, out of the gene pool. Um, with the help, so the second sons, Eleazar and Ithmar, served as the priests. With the help of Zadok, a descendant of Eleazar, and Ahimelech, a descendant of Ithamar, David separated them into divisions for their appointed order of ministering. A larger number of leaders, you know, I just want to say one thing. It probably would be very important for David to uh, know who he's looking at and where they come from. Okay, so that most likely is why we're hearing about, um, you know, the past and now the present in David's time. Because, you know, he's, he's dealing with these uh, descendants now. And so it probably is important to know whose descendants are what and where. Okay, uh, or maybe it's more familiar to him and he just knows it because they've all grown up uh you know what I'm trying to say? They've all, they've all been in a group for so long, I guess. Um, you know, I guess the generations go on, maybe not with the Jewish people, but you know how like with us, as the generations go on, we sort of lose our family trees. I, I don't think, I think that the fact that they're listing them here shows you that that wasn't happening in Israel. They weren't losing their family trees, okay, or forgetting about them or, okay, uh, they're honored. All right. Um, a larger number of leaders were found among Eleazar's descendants. So see, once, once again, he knows these are Eleazar's descendants, and there was a larger number of leaders found among them uh, Ithmar, uh, than among Ithmar's. So more from Eleazar than Ithmar. And they were divided accordingly. 16 heads of families from Eleazar's descendants and eight heads of families from Ithmar's descendants. They divided them impartially by casting lots for there were officials of the sanctuary and officials of God among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithmar. Okay. So nothing is, doesn't seem like anything's forgotten here amongst the Jews. The scribe Shemaiah, son of Nethanel, a Levite, recorded their names in the presence of the king and of the officials, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, and the heads of the families of the priests and of the Levites, one family being taken from Eleazar and then one from Ithmar. The first lot fell to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah, the third to Haram, the fourth to Sorim, the fifth to Malkajah, the sixth to Mishamim, the seventh to Hakaz, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, Eliashib, the twelfth to Jacob, Jacob, the thirteenth to Huppa, H-U-P-P-A-H, the fourteenth to Jeshabiab, the fifteenth to Bilgah, the sixteenth to Immer, the 17th to Hezer, the 18th to Hapazes, the 19th to Pethahiah, the 20th to Jehezkel, the 21st to Jachin, the 22nd to Gamul, Gamul, G-A-M-U-L, the 23rd to Deliah, and the 24th to Messiah. This was their appointed order of ministering when they entered the temple of the Lord according to the regulations prescribed for them by their ancestor Aaron as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded him. Okay, so they're sticking with tradition is what I'm getting from this. There's a lot of tradition in here. Uh, and I'm wondering if that was going back and forth between Eleazar and then Ithmar. It says here, the scribe Shammai recorded their names in the presence of the king and of the officials. 
Zadok the priest, Ahimelech son of Abiathar, and the heads of families of the priests and of the Levites, one family being taken from Eleazar and then one from Ithmar. So maybe it's going back and forth when it says the first lot fell to Jehoarib. I don't know. I don't want to try to get in there and figure it out. All right. Um, as for the rest of the descendants of Levi from the sons of Amram, Shubael, from the sons of Shubael, Jehadiah, no, Jediah, as for Rahab, Rahab, Rahabiah, Rehabiah from his sons, Ishiah was the first, from the Israelites, Shilamoth, Shilamoth, from the sons of Shilamoth, Jahath, the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jahaz, Jahaziel the third, and Jechameam the fourth, the son of Uziel, Micah, from the sons of Micah, Shamir, the brother of Micah, Ishiah, from the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah, the sons of Merari, Mali, and Mushi, the sons of Josiah, Benno, B-E-N-O, the sons of Merari, from Josiah, Benno, uh, from Josiah, Benno, Shoham, Zachar, and Ibri, from Mali, Eleazar, who had no sons, from Kish, the son of Kish, Jeremiel. And the sons of Mushi, Mali, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the Levites according to their families. They also cast lots just as their relatives, the descendants of Aaron, did in the presence of King David and of Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of the families of the priests and of the Levites. The families of the oldest brother were treated the same as those of the youngest. Whoo! Okay, I sort of get all that, okay? Um, you know, we, we see that it's a chronology, it's a chronicle. Um, I think, uh, you know, if we could see it acted out in front of us, it would probably make more sense. But I think it's just a listing of descendants with a rank and file, you know, who's got the rank and who doesn't. And um, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. For First Chronicles 25, if there is such a book, we'll find out. I love you very much. You have a good evening, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.